Salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, good to see you back on the live, Sheikhna. How's it going? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I've been well. How's your Eid? How was Eid day in Medina? Alhamdulillah, all was good. Alhamdulillah, it was a bit different, but uh, Alhamdulillah. Yourself, Alhamdulillah. It was good, Alhamdulillah, like you said, it was a different way. We didn't have the Eid Salah and that, but Alhamdulillah, we got together as family and it was it was a nice experience. You know, uh, I, I saw your video just now, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, yes, the Haram, we just got back home now, Alhamdulillah. So, yeah. Yeah, wow, it's, it's good to see the Haram open again and uh, these videos help, you know, it's nice to see uh, from, from a personal perspective, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Shaykhana, we had given uh, a little vote yesterday where we asked the people what do they want, you know, to be discussed. And we said either between the topic what's, what's after Ramadan or skills and hobbies and, you know, interests, what people are interested in. And it was quite close, but a lot of the people wanted, to, wanted us to discuss the topic about what's after Ramadan, what comes next. I think if we look at this topic, we first have to take a step back and ask ourselves, what did we do in Ramadan? What good deed was I doing? If you're able to answer that, then you're able to plan ahead and you're able to see what's after Ramadan. So I'll give you an example. In the month of Ramadan, you may have been performing a lot more voluntary salah. You may have been reading the Quran a lot more. You may have been doing other good deeds, which you may not necessarily carry out in other months of the year. So if you were able to do those good deeds, I think every Muslim on the face of this earth who knows about Ramadan was definitely engaged in a lot more good, a lot more good deeds than they usually would have. So if you're able to see what you, what you were doing, you're able to realize that, okay, I did three, four, five things in Ramadan. Those are now like seeds. You are planting those seeds or you have planted them. What's after Ramadan? Now is your job to nurture these seeds. Yes, it may be a little bit different in the sense that maybe in Ramadan you read one juz a day or you were reading 20 raka'at or 10 raka'at, whatever it may have been. You may not be able to maintain that standard. If you're able to, alhamdulillah. If you're not, don't go back to your position all the way before Ramadan where you were doing nothing. No, take a little bit. So you've planted your seed and now start growing slowly. Yeah, so, so true. You know, that's, uh, Ramadan should be a teacher for, for us where we, we're learning uh, something that we can implement throughout the year. So it's like uh, some scholars say it's like boot camp where you go and it's intensive. But that intensity, of course, you won't carry it uh, throughout the, the rest of the year, but obviously it becomes uh, less and you, you, you carry on with some extra ibadat and worship. So imagine going from strength to strength. Every year you reach Ramadan, you increase. And when you exit that Ramadan, you're slightly more and then you move to the next Ramadan. And so every Ramadan you come to it, you're stronger than the, 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 the year before. Uh, you know, so I think that that's something that we can really learn from from Ramadan you know it can really push us in our lives in that way yes I think uh, as we mentioned before you know people sometimes uh, people got their jobs they're busy during the month of Ramadan they've tried their best they've taken out a lot of uh, a lot of time to try and do good deeds I think to simplify it yes people are of different levels let's say you at uh, you know a level you want to do good try and look at at least one good deed you were doing in the month of Ramadan. Let's take an example, Salah. Just one. You were reading, for example, four extra units of prayer, example, during the month of Ramadan. Now, let's say that's your seed that has been planted and that will, that will grow into a tree, be even Allah, if you nurture it. So your job, if you want the very least, after taking care of what's compulsory upon you, look at the seed of Salah. Okay, maybe after the month of Ramadan, I'm unable to read for at least two, at least two units of prayer. Keep it going so you can plant your seed. When you get to Ramadan the next year, you would find that you already into, I don't like to call it the habit, but you, you've got a routine or you've got, you used to carrying out this act of worship. 
So it's your salah, your two units of prayer. And then maybe in the next Ramadan, you look for a new seed to nurture. So you look at your Quran. That we look, we're talking about people who have or who say they're very busy and they have no time. At least they've made a little bit of an improvement. There are others who did various good deeds. So look at these seeds that you have planted. Yes, at the very beginning, you throw your seeds in and you put a lot of water and your fertilizer, etc., etc. Now, as you're looking after your trees or your good deeds, try and make them grow. So you were used to reading one juz of the Quran in the month of Ramadan. Now maybe you don't have time, at least a quarter, at least two, three pages. But progress, don't become stagnant. Don't become stagnant and don't go down. So I think a lot of people lose out here where they get very intense in the month of Ramadan and the minute Eid happens, it's like now I'm back to my uh, self that I was before. Yet they, they don't realize that, you know, this should be a madrasa, a, a time that should teach you a lot for the rest of your year. So, uh, of course, yes, doing good deeds in Ramadan is good, but you should take something away from it for, for your the rest of your year as well. And this is why we find like straight after Ramadan, Rasulullah Sallallahu says, من صام رمضان ثم أتبعه بست من شوال كان كصيام الدهر. The one who fasts Ramadan and then follows it up with six fasts, it's as though he's fasted the entire year. So it's like encouraging you that yes, Ramadan has ended, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is still there. Worship Him, and these are the fasts that you can really gain benefit from. And in addition to that, you know, the the general message is that after Ramadan, there is still ibadah, there is still worship to be done. After Ramadan, not only after Ramadan, but after every single ibadah, there's another ibadah and another act of worship to carry out. After your salah, there's something else. After your zakah, there's something else, the sadaqah, etc. Another interesting thing to mention when it comes to this point about carrying out good deeds, you spoke about it, the six voluntary fasts of Shawwal. After that, people also, if they're into it, uh, Mondays and Thursdays, uh, the middle days of the month of Ramadan, you know, you get into you get into the flow. Something interesting to mention is that I think we've all seen it when it's come to this pandemic, whatever's going on at the moment. If you look back and rewind three months, four months ago, before life changed for almost everybody on the face of this earth, you were able to do certain things. And now all of a sudden you're unable to do them. Or you have to you know, improvise, you have to do it a little bit differently. Where you could go and roam freely, you can't. Where you could be with everybody, you can't. The point I'm getting to is also when it comes to your acts of worship, you don't know when's the last time you'll be able to do it. You don't know when's, when this opportunity was given to you, you didn't take it, you don't know whether it will come back again or not. Not only when it comes to the month of Ramadan, when it comes to your salah, when it comes to your voluntary prayer, you know when you're still young, you're able to fast, voluntary fast, or you're able to recite the Quran much more. Who knows, after a few years, life around you may change in such a way where you can't do it anymore, or your health may not be permitted, or you may become busy. So usually you'll find that during your lifetime, there's, there's, a, there's a small door that opens, or a period of time, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you the opportunity and the time to carry out an ibadah. Usually, not always, but usually you find that as you progress in life and that opportunity has passed, it generally doesn't come back again. That's so true, so true, because with the social distancing that's happened at the moment, uh, many masajid have been closed completely. And it's an, something that people really miss, you know, where I was just thinking of it. It's been nearly a month or more than a month yeah we we haven't performed salatul jumu'ah and it it feels so you know you feel terrible about it and that was a door that we that was open where we never ever thought it would be closed so subhanallah that opportunity that we've had all our lives was just stopped all of a sudden and i think that's so relevant with what you're saying that you know we don't know this window of opportunity that we have right now when it will close, when we won't be able to do things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best whatever is within our capacity we should do now and uh, try to increase on it. So, yes, absolutely. Yes, as we touched on the first point, when it comes to the month of Ramadan, what's after Ramadan? Look at the good deeds you are doing and try and try and build on them. Don't be like somebody who, as we mentioned our example, you planted your seeds, 
and then you leave your tree for the next 11 months of the year, then next year Ramadan, you want to try and plant a new tree. No, keep your tree, keep it growing, basically your good deeds, and try and increase. And we find as in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many, uh, in many ayat, he speaks about how, you know, good deeds, they bring about more good deeds. Also in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you do a good deed and you find bi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you the tawfiq to do more good deeds. And the same when it comes to evil, a person who does evil, then more sin and more evil becomes easier for him to do. Yes, uh, absolutely. I think that's where Ramadan really uh, boosts a person. And like I, I like your example of trees, you know, where uh, you, you say you grow your tree, plant the seeds and then grow your tree and nurture it and uh, make sure that the next Ramadan it grows even more. You know, that's a time where you can really uh, make sure that there's a growth spurt in that, subhanAllah. So it, it really uh, gives you that ability to think of your good deeds as a, an investment for you that you'll reap benefit from. You know, I, I'll tell you something interesting in Surah Al-Asr. Once I was reading the tafsir some years back, and we find in the Quran a lot of times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about deeds, good deeds, sometimes he uses terms which we know in business. So he says, Man hasana. Who will give Allah a good loan? It's not because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs a loan, no. The reason why the word loan is mentioned is because that is something that's guaranteed. So if, uh, if uh, you give me some money as a loan, then whether I lose it, whether somebody stole it from me, no matter what, I have to pay you back this money that it has to come to you, it's guaranteed. So basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that whoever does these good deeds and comes on the day of Qiyamah or these good deeds, his ajr or his, you know, his reward is guaranteed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's an investment you're making and that is guaranteed. Now let's go to Surah Al-Asr. When you ponder over the Surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wal Asr, taking an oath by Al-Asr, it could be Salat Al-Asr, it could be time in general. He then says, Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Indeed, people or mankind in general are at a loss. We used to hearing profit and loss, at a loss. Except those who believe. And for a person to believe, they have to have knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they do good deeds. And they encourage one another to do good. They help each other to remain steadfast. They encourage one another to be patient. If you ponder over the surah, you'll find the first part is talking about a person himself. So here, our example is similar. You've got your good deeds, you're investing, or you, you're putting your good deeds and you're planting your trees. After that, you then go to complete others. So how do you complete others? You help them do good, you tell them to be patient, etc. When you are doing this, think of, your, think of it as an investment. Let's go to the, a worldly example. If you put your money, yes, you can carry on running behind money and working, working, you get something. But then you invest here and you've got a property here and you've got an asset here. You get so much, you know, wealth, even in love, without you having done so much work. So same when it comes to your good deeds. There's only so much you can do. But if you teach somebody else and you teach another person and you help another person and they benefit from you, this now becomes like an investment. And as in the hadith that every person you teach something good to, when they do that good deed, you also get its reward. So it's a very interesting analogy you you mentioned or a very interesting point that it's like an investment that that's so true because you know uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like you're saying he uses this word Man hasanan, right who is it that uh, will loan allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a goodly loan and uh, just the other day i was thinking of it that you know people don't value time in fact i heard it from somebody else online where he was saying people don't value time but if we have to quantify that into money and sit and say, okay, your time is worth X amount of uh, money, $50 an hour. In two years, three years, how much would you have lost from the number of hours that you waste in a day? Say you waste six hours a day, you would have lost X amount of money, maybe 200000 maybe $500,000 of money. So if you quantify it into money for a lot of people, uh, they, they tend to give it real value. So perhaps... You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our nature. 
And this is why we find that he says, That you love wealth, a very great love. There's a great love that insan has for, for, for wealth. So uh, perhaps this is the reasoning also behind why, you know, su- such terms are being used. Think of it as a loan. You're giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are you giving? A being who can give you and who will give you better than any other, uh, any, anybody else. So why not invest your time in this, uh, you know, in such good deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will most definitely return it. So in this dunya, you might invest and there's no guaranteed return. But in the akhirah, you're investing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed you that return. Shaykh, I think something we should touch on is uh, with, you know, people's routines, people's schedules, the way life is going at the moment, there's a lot of uncertainty. So you find somebody, they may say during the month of Ramadan, I had a timetable or I had my schedule. Then now in the last 10 days, it's, uh, it, I try to do a bit more. Now life's changed again. I'm getting back to normal life. You know, this, this change and looking for time and opportunity, how does somebody handle this, especially with uh, the current pandemic going around? What advice would you give them, especially somebody who wants to do good deeds? You know, they're eager, but they, they're saying that there's a lot of change that's going on. I can't really keep up. What advice would you have for them? Allah, I think this is a time where a lot of people have more free time on their hands. So even in places where, you know, the the limitations are being lifted, etc. You're only working limited number of hours, limited amount of work. So you do have a lot of free time. And, you know, people who argue and say that we don't have the time, I always tell them that how long do you spend on social media in a day? And the answer is always a few hours, or most of the time it's a few hours that they spend. So we do have that extra time that we can now utilize. The problem is that Sitting down and writing down a timetable is important. At this time, I'm going to do this. If you don't want to write it down, at least have a mental idea that when I wake up, I want to be doing this for X amount of time. Then I want to move on to this you know, uh, action. Because if you don't have that planned out, then whatever comes your way, you'll be consuming of it, you'll be doing it, you'll be uh, engaged in it. Whereas if you've got a set plan, it doesn't need to always go according to that plan, but you, you generally try to stick to, a, to that and you're moving towards certain goals in your life. You're achieving something. Uh, so just, just the other day, I was seeing a brother who was talking about how he accepted Islam and he wanted to understand the Quran. So he actually sat and started writing out the entire Quran. He wrote and he, within two years, subhanAllah, as far as I'm sure, it was two years. He finished writing the entire Quran and with its meaning at the bottom, you know, with the uh, meaning of the words. So now when he's reading the Quran, he understands. He's able to, it's easy. He doesn't understand. He goes to his, what he's written, goes there and, you know, uh, sees the meaning of it. So amazing, uh, absolutely amazing. Imagine there's so many of us who have wanted to do these things in our lives. Now's your time. Now's your opportunity. Yes, there's no going to the masjid. Yes, it's sad. But at the same time, are you utilizing that time uh, with productive work, doing something that can really benefit you and change you? You know, you mentioned such a powerful point that basically where there's a will, there's a way. You've got time. If you, you say you don't have time and you look for it, you will be in Allah, not make time, but you will find time. As long as it's something that's a priority, you have to now make this a priority. You have to say, you know, it needs to get done. And yes, people are different. You know, I was just sitting, uh, writing out a timetable yesterday, today. And I was looking at, between us. I'm not, I'm not somebody who can stick to a timetable. I said after Ramadan, uh, I'll sit for a little while. Yeah, I'll do a few things, but slowly, slowly, slowly build up. And I think everybody is different. But even though people are different, the point you mentioned everybody can take away from it is make your plan, you know, write it down, say, I need to get this done, I need to get this done, I need to get this done. Look at the hours you need to consume or the hours that need to be put in behind this project and then start looking where you can find hours. You know, sometimes if it means your day needs to start early on, if it really means something to you, if it's your life mission, imagine, do you want to be somebody who who dies having had so many ideas, you wanted to do this, you wanted to do this, you wanted to do this. 
But every day you were waking up at seven, eight, nine o'clock, not doing it. You know, you eventually get to a stage in life, even in life, when something means something to you, you even, I'm not saying sleep less or deprive yourself, but you get up on time, you make time for these things. At the beginning of your day, you'll start with what's extremely important to you. Yes, and you know, Ramadan, I was just thinking of it now that uh, Ramadan in and of itself is a teacher of life because, you know, it comes for a short period of time and then it's gone. Your life is there for a short period of time and then it's gone. If you compare it in, in comparison to the Akhirah, I mean, the Akhirah is everlasting. This is very short in comparison to it. So uh, Ramadan has started, think of it, your birth as now your Ramadan of, the, of life has started. And your death is the, when you see the moon of Eid and it's, it's over. And now it's time for you to enter into the everlasting. The question is, are you going to be happy on that Eid or when you, when you pass on, when you leave? This world, you know, so to, so, you know, metaphorically calling it an Eid. Of course, it's not an Eid in and of itself. But, uh, you know, are you going to be happy uh, the same way that you see? And it's something that we can really think of. Uh, just today, I was um, talking on another forum and we were talking about wealth. And, you know, it, it came to me to say that wealth is really just our access to these resources for the number of years that we are in this world for. It's the access that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us because the wealth stays on. You pass. You pass on and you leave, but the wealth stays and it's inherited. And then other people are now given access to that wealth for some time. So, you know, it's been inherited over the centuries and it passes on and on. And it's just the time that you have. So in everything in our life, time is just that little resource that you have for a short while. What are you going to do in it? And then you're going to meet your maker to de- you know, be judged now and either it's to Jannah or uh, to everlasting doom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Amen. Amen. Sheikh, a quick recap. I think what we mentioned for those joining the stream now, we were saying after Ramadan, a person firstly, look at the good deeds you were doing in the month of Ramadan and try to carry on with these good deeds. You may not carry on at the same level, but at least a little bit and start nurturing them. We also mentioned the importance of, you know, having a timetable, having a schedule, planning your day out. Yes, it's not easy straight from Ramadan to get back into life again or carry on your whole life like it's uh, Ramadan where you're at your peak. That's why there's the day of Eid. That's why there's the day of feasting where you stop fasting and, you know, it's a day of enjoyment and happiness. But then slowly you get back into the rhythm of Ramadan or doing some of the good deeds you did during the month of Ramadan. I think it's been a good session. It was a short one. Uh, I haven't seen any questions, so I don't know. Shall we uh, end the session? Alhamdulillah. Uh, there was one more thing or a few things to mention, but one that comes to mind is another topic that a lot of people showed interest in, as we mentioned, it was half-half. People also wanted us to discuss, you know, hobbies, interests, developing skills. You know, sometimes it's frowned upon where a person thinks that if I'm an alim or if I want to learn the deen, I mustn't know, for example, how to run my business or how to do a few things in in my worldly life. And the opposite is also true. Sometimes a person thinks that if I'm a computer programmer or if I'm a pilot or if I'm whatever I may be, this stops me from being, you know, more religious or getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think there's something important to mention there. I think we should leave it for another session. That's a, a long topic on its own. Maybe we can ask you about uh, some of the hobbies you may have. We've seen your bees, mashallah. <laughs> yes, I'd love to talk about them, inshallah. I think I've I've developed quite, quite a re- relationship with the bees. You know, it's a... It's a relationship of love and hate. Sometimes they show you, they show you a bit of hate. You know, uh, Subhanallah. I've been stung a few times. It's a very interesting, uh, very interesting hobby. Alhamdulillah, I've learned a lot from it. What got you, What got you into bees in the first place? Uh, I mean, when I was still there, I, I never ever knew you as being somebody who was interested in bees and that type. Of thing. You know, Wallahi, I was 
gifted this uh, hive that's very interesting and it works amazingly. Uh, so I, it, it's literally honey on tap. You turn the tap and then honey flows out of the hive. But when you see the video, it looks just amazing. So when I was gifted this, I thought that, uh, you know, I'm not into beekeeping, but I need to do this. Uh, because now I've got this expensive contraption here, it would be a waste. And I've been interested in it ever since I saw the video. So uh, I, I picked it up and I started. And subhanAllah, you know, in the beginning, it was very slow for the bees to come in. It was a very laborious process. But once it started, then it became interesting. You know, when you see the bees first in the hive and how they're entering and exiting. And you, you I have a few uh, videos of my early you know, uh, the, the start of the journey, so to speak, on, on Instagram as well. And it was very interesting for me. I started learning more about it. And I bought some books and I was reading about it and uh, watching videos online. So I was thrown into the deep end, so to speak. You know, I had a, a, a hive and I had to start learning now. Now, speaking about the bees, when we look in the surahs, the chapters of the Quran, we find so many of them are named after animals. So you've got uh, an nahl You've got Al-Naml, the ants. You've got Al-Ankabut, the spider. al baqarah the calf or the cow. And uh, there's a lot that's... Uh, well, there's a lot of times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the creation, the creatures he's created, telling us to ponder over these animals, these creatures, whether they may be insects, mosquitoes, uh, bees, flies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if everybody had to come to bring a fly, you know, to create a fly, they wouldn't be able to. Everybody along with all their associates. So it's very interesting looking around and looking at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always trying to get that nature or that scenery or something that's beautiful and relating it to the fact that, you know, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that in and of itself is an ibadah. As Allah says that those who ponder over the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, basically he praises them. Yes, well, Allah, like, maybe you can tell us some of your, your uh, hobbies as well. Inshallah, we probably go into another session there. I'm more interested in... Uh, these days, I read a lot more on business and growth and that type of thing. I think what's interesting that I found in my life, yes, we both, alhamdulillah, studied in Medina. I'm still here, inshallah, I'll probably finish this year. As we learned through, we learned the Arabic language, we learned Sharia, we learned in the Haram, etc. And what was interesting, there was a turning point that happened in my life. And when we were in, you know, the faculty Sharia, in Mustawa Sadis, the sixth semester so this is about two years before you finish sharia we then moved on to mu'amalat so for those who know the sharia you would find that people talk about ibadat yes ibadat are very important what's your ibadah your salah your zakah your hajj your fasting and before that obviously your belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawheed etc now there's another aspect of life another aspect of a muslim's life and that's true with mu'amalat so you're buying and selling how you interact with others, marriage, when it comes to judicial system, etc. So when I got there, I found that I had learned, yes, for five, six years. And now somebody was teaching me something completely different. I was more of the type where, yes, I read my books. I tried to memorize. I stuck to things. If you ask me about something new, so if you told me, you know, what's, I don't know, cryptocurrencies or online business at that time, I would have just probably frowned and just said that, no, you know what, stay away from it, etc. I don't know. And left it at that, not thinking that there was something wrong with me for not knowing about it. After that, when I got to this point, there was somebody who was teaching us. I know him very well, mashallah, very good sheikh. He's then teaching us fiqh of mu'amalat from a whole different angle. So we went into Islamic finance, we went into buyur, buying and selling, you know, new Masail. What happens if we, if we say that Islam is a complete religion? That means if you have a loyalty card when it comes to the Hilton or any other hotel, there's, an, there's a hukum there. There's halal and haram involved. There's something there. When you're buying online, there's something there. So a lot of times we find that people think that your Islam is your salah at home or in the masjid and that's it. 
when you go to your business or when you want to interact with someone or when you're on the internet, the programs you write is Islamic rulings. So slowly, I think my, my mind started opening. And from there, uh, I looked into, I was very interested at the time in Islamic finance. I then wrote the exam and I studied that. I'm currently still studying that. But as with anything, you, you learn it. I'm not saying something bad of it. I'm not praising it or saying something bad. I'm saying you learn and you realize that, yes, those who really support it, alhamdulillah, they've tried and they've done a lot. But they, still, they themselves will tell you before anything else, we've tried, but there's a lot of work to do. And then there are those who completely, or they say that stay far away from it. So where do you draw that balance? And in Islam, if we believe that Islam is a complete religion and we believe that everything that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or everything that we need, Allah and His Messenger gave us some sort of guidance, that should be complete, that should be in everything. So whether it comes to parenting, whether it comes to teaching people how to give a lecture, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself was one of the best of speakers. That's why in uh, Sahih Ahadith, it's mentioned that when he would speak or address the people, there was a way he spoke. His voice was high and it was as though he was commanding an army. So in Islam also, you, know, you learn how to speak, you learn how to interact with people, you learn how to do business. And I think that then took me on a journey to, which I think I'm currently on at the beginning, where I want to learn from anybody and everybody. Anybody you find you know, sometimes we want to learn, especially from those who are the best in their fields. That's very good. But you'll find anybody who you see in life, you sit with half an hour, an hour, there's something you'll be able to take from them. Just look for it and you'll find it. Absolutely, absolutely, mashallah. Uh, that, that's a topic that I'm also interested in. You know, I've, I've been following uh, what you've uh, been, been putting out there. And you had some uh, sessions, podcast sessions on uh, Islamic, uh, you know, dealings and mu'amalat, etc. Uh, are you carrying on with that uh, podcast? Yes, inshallah. I think this week I was off for a little while, but uh, well, last week. And inshallah, once a week. So tafsir, I want to go be even Allah to Surah uh, Yusuf a little bit and carry on with it once a week. And hadith, inshallah, we'll carry on with uh, the hadith in Sahih al Bukhari, Kitab al Buyur, buying and selling. And those are hadith, we're looking at them from a more contemporary, you know, looking at contemporary masail or rulings, be even Allah. Yes, absolutely. I, I really like uh, th those podcasts as, as well. It gives me a lot of insight into that uh, part of uh, the fiqh, you know, uh, aspect, etc. So Alhamdulillah, it really helps. And I think a lot of people do enjoy uh, li listening to these topics as well. So perhaps we'll, we'll talk uh, on one of these topics, uh, perhaps uh, one of the sessions, inshallah, we'll talk about them. Maybe in the next session we can touch on some of the interests and hobbies, etc. Sheikh and I, if you could, uh, uh, any last points or a quick recap on what we mentioned, what's after Ramadan? Jazakallah uh, khair. So basically we were talking about how Ramadan uh, was, is a teacher and how it should help you, you know, through the rest of your year and you build. So we were talking about trees and how uh, when you plant a seed, it should be nurtured. And once you've planted these seeds in Ramadan, they should be nurtured to the next Ramadan and then grow from there. Uh, so the, the, these are some of the points that I remember from our discussion so far. And uh, perhaps you can touch on a few more. Yes, Allah. I'll tell you something interesting. This last Ramadan, it was one of my colleagues I had learned with in high school. He's not a Muslim, but he messaged me and he said that I want to fast this Ramadan. What should I do? So I told him he's into fitness, they own a gym, etc. Subhanallah, he, he fasted the whole month of Ramadan. And after two, three days, he says that, yeah, it's nice. I'm used to it. You know, I've got a detox from social media. My day, literally waking up at Fajr time, says my day starts early. It finishes off. I get a lot done. So I think I'll ask him now about uh, carrying on with the six fasts of Shawwal, etc. Let's see what he says and inshallah I'll update you. <laughs> wow, that's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Inshallah, may Allah guide him and uh, grant him goodness and uh, from his life. Ameen. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all and grant us all goodness. Shaykhana, any last words? 
Jazakallah khair. It's been lovely being on the session once again. I was actually missing this. Uh, now, right at the end, I began to miss it. So, alhamdulillah, it's good to be back. And it's good to be chatting. Jazakallah khair. And alhamdulillah, we both, uh, we all benefiting from this. Alhamdulillah. I mean, I think one of the best things is that if people can be discussing or speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some of the verses, some of the ayat uh, in the Quran, some of the hadith, giving advice, you know, if there's nothing that you got from this except protecting your tongue from saying something bad or looking at something bad, that in itself is an achievement. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us acceptance. One more thing before we go, a lot of people asking, is this going to be every day? I think we've agreed for now, once a week, as things, life uh, gets back into order, you know, the timetables, we see how things are going, and then maybe we take it from there. What do you think? Yes, absolutely, inshallah. And if it's going well and we're uh, enjoying the sessions, etc., people will benefiting from it, maybe we could increase it to two, inshallah. Bismillah, bismillah, barakallah, fikum, jazakumullah, khairan, sheikh. Inshallah, we will probably see you next week. Next week, inshallah. time roughly the same time, or unless we mention or agree on another time, we'll update that, inshallah. Yes, inshallah. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.